Hey guys, this will be video 11 for the how to design build a custom flying V using Stuart McDonald templates from time to time. And if you do have the templates from possibly building uh, a Les Paul or a different guitar, uh, you definitely can use them to build a, a Les Paul Jr., an SG, or a Strat, or a Flying V, because the only difference is uh, whether it's an arch top or a flat top, because everything is based on a center line. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try to remind myself that there's someone out there that has never thought on this level before. So if you guys have been watching a lot of my videos, 90% uh, of this video is going to be a complete repeat of how I talk about uh, uh, fitting a neck to a body. So on that note, as I used to always say, uh, and I'm trying to curb myself. It's funny when you start doing videos and you listen to your own videos, you 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 realize why certain people don't hang around you anymore because you, can, you you realize how annoying you can be. You start repeating things or phrases or ideologies, I guess, or whatever. I don't know. So anyway, let me try to get back on point as as I as I'm gonna always keep saying because that seems to make sense. So how do you fit a neck to a body? Well, or something. How do you fit a neck to a board? Well, it's you, you find the center line, and that's pretty much it. Once you find the center line, uh, you're 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 halfway there. You're not all the way there, but you're getting pretty close. Now, this guitar was built quite a while back, and then I couldn't remember if I had done a really really good job at when I glued glued these two boards up. Because these boards, uh, they're identical to the way a Karina Flying V would be built. The, the, boards, the, the, uh, the boards come in on an angle, and then they meet on a, on, a, on a center line. Well, and I couldn't remember if that center line was absolutely perfect. And for the most part, it, it definitely is. It's definitely perfectly on center. But I didn't know that because this was all taped over to protect it and it was painted black and it was dirty and grungy and uh the only thing i realized that was important okay i got a, i've got a shape here and it, and it's it's like an upside down a or it's a flying v or it's whatever you want to call it it is what it is so i wanted to just kind of ease my way back in and find the center line so i basically came up here with my square and I put the tape up there, which I knew was roughly going to be where the bridge was. I made a mark right there. And then I came over here and I made a mark right there. Well, but basic geometry tells us that that's going to be the center. If you were to draw a perfectly perpendicular line with the center line, then that distance from here to here and from here to here are identical, which defines the center. Um, that is, if this a trapezoidal path is true, okay? And then all I did was come back down here and uh, made, an, made another mark. Keep in mind, it still had the red up here, and I didn't, the red was just one piece of material, so you can't determine what is the visual center line. Uh, so I did the same thing, okay? And then uh, I verified, I made those two marks, and then I kind of eased my way back into the job because I wanted to make certain that uh, possibly when I was doing all of this build out from the beginning, sometimes I used to be really bad about leaving if there was an issue that maybe this, this cutaway came in and it was about a, a 64th of an inch, a little bit heavy, and this one was a 64th of an inch. Uh, a little bit weak, or in other words, it was a little bit off center. But I knew that it, in the in in the, in the fitment, I would clean it up. Well, I don't do that stuff anymore because because what will happen is later on you will forget that you might be off a little bit, and then you'll end up putting your neck in wrong. So I'm not going to start talking about hypothetical problems, but just know that if you, once you're working an operation. Take that operation to a finished point. That way, when you start doing all your black and you start building up 5, 10, 7, 15, 18 coats of nitro cellulose lacquer here at the end of the game, you don't realize, oh, man, I got to come in and take off that 64th and lose every bit of my black. Now I got to start over. So all of the energy that I put in painting that body and getting all of those base coats is null and void. 
or when I did the round over here months ago, when I did the round over here with the eighth inch bit, now now it would have it would have been wrong. And I would have to have done all that shape work and then still pull the router out and clean up the round round over. I'm not being melodramatic. I'm just saying once you're working a job, finish the job. Because I I'm at a, I'm I'm at a point now in my building uh, that I can look at a project and if it's painted black, I know it's finished. You know, because I don't I don't do that crap anymore. So let's take it to the finish line as quickly as we can. But nonetheless, I didn't give myself the benefit of the doubt. I still came in here and I defined those center lines. Let's see if you can see it. Let me just uh, stop talking. I got the light on the right. It's so hard. To... Okay, so perfect. When I, when I did all of these alignments, then I did all this route work, that line that I've discovered right there fell perfectly, perfectly in center with the glue up of the body. Now, is that important? Not at all. It could be off a little bit, and especially with a top like this. Now, if your top was glued, if your top was glued up with a center line, then yes, even if your center line is off a very small amount, Consider the fact of maybe just building your body towards the visual center then, okay? You cross, cross your own bridge in that respect. But I'm in great shape. And when I, when I, did, when I did, is that the, I don't, I couldn't, it's funny. You know you're, you're getting good when you pick up, I picked up that Les Paul neck a little while ago. And I, even though it was tight, I was like, oh, wow. I picked up the wrong neck, but I, when I fit it in, it was perfect. So there's 100% consistency between my building path, whether I'm building a Les Paul and or whether I'm building a Flying V. Now you know you're beginning to do uh, predictable work, and that's what you that's what you want to shoot for. Okay, so how do you how do you route that out? Uh, and and if you don't know what you're doing and you've never done it before, well, let's just uh, let's just start thinking mechanically. Basically, all you're wanting to do is fit a tenon to a mortise, and you want that tenon to be on, on the center. Okay, correct? You, you, you don't want the tenon, you don't want the tenon to be off the center line, either base side or treble side, if you can help it. And you certainly, certainly don't want the yaw as I've talked about, a uh, pitch, a uh, roll, and, and yaw, like flying an airplane or a helicopter for Steve. If that, Steve, I know you mentioned that he was in the Air Force, and I, you didn't clarify if you were a helicopter pilot or not. If you were, that's pretty cool, man. I flew um, uh, I flew up at Wallace State Flight School back in the 80s, and I was going to go in the Air Force and fly the 16. Because my first cousin, twice removed through my uh, mother, uh, her last name was Grissom, and my first cousin, twice removed, was Virgil Gus Grissom, the Apollo astronaut that uh, was instrumental in the Apollo program. And uh, and, I, and it's amazing. I never knew that he was my cousin until much, much later in life. And I always had this bug to fly the 16 and, uh, and didn't. But let's get back on point. So we got a roll, roll pitch and yaw under control. And let's back up and start just thinking mechanic, mechanically. We just want to put that board in on the center, correct? Okay. Well, then if, if, this, if this is a flat surface and you find the center back there and the center back there, if this tenon is one and three quarters of an inch wide, simply step off three quarters of an inch here and three quarters of an inch here three quarters of an inch here and here and draw those two lines. You're going to be within a 64th of an inch of, of the center. Once you connect, once you then connect that line to that line, that line to that line, then if this is the imaginary tenon lay, just laying up on the body, well, okay. If this is the, if this is the tenon installed, then all we want is that tenon to be back there. So what I'm saying, pull out your table saw, cut a tenon uh, or a block one in, one and three one in, uh, one and a half one and one half inch wide, and then I want you to put some tape on the bottom here, some tape. You've already got your tape here, and now I want you to uh, CA glue this down. 
or jet glue this down perfectly perfectly centered and and what is this that's your stop point that's where your router bit that's where your little router bit will come up and stop so we we've, we've, we've defined that back wall right and it doesn't matter if we're building a table that's 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 going to have the you know the, the the table that that the opening leaf table whatever that means i can tell i'm not a furniture builder but you've got that glued down temporarily now all you got to do is come in and then just uh you know do the same thing and uh, jet glue those down now you have defined the the stop point and the side point now i want you to set up your router but only come in only come in just imagine your your a router template is still still there but only come in and take out about a quarter of an inch uh, maybe a little bit more don't take your template apart but at this point then come in here with your calipers and just kind of start assessing what you've got going on and if this one were wider and this one were more narrow well then maybe come up here and, and check this one might be a little bit wider and this one may be more narrow. So does it matter? The, the tenon could be off. The mortise could be off an eighth of an inch either direction. And you'll be fine as long as your tenon is off in that direction as well. The reason I mention that, on some cutaway guitars, some guys want the cutaway to be thicker. Especially if you're doing like a 24 fret guitar, you're doing a really deep cutaway, well, you don't want a one-eighth inch uh, sidewall cut all the way down here. You'll have a, you'll, you'll create a weak point right here. So you might design your tenon to be almost all the way up on the high, on the base side, if it's a right-hand guitar, and then you've left all that mass in. Doesn't matter uh, what what's going on down here mechanically, because once this fretboard comes down, it's all covered anyway. Okay, so I went off the, the rails there a little bit in general conversation, but uh, I think that should make enough sense that it doesn't matter if you're doing a guitar neck or a table or a chair or whatever, just find the center and start thinking, thinking in positive and negative space. I want to create negative space here, so I need positive space templates in order to just, you know, control my router bit. And then once you get down to that point and everything looks great. Go ahead and take this down, okay, because we're gonna be pitching this, okay? Now, if you're, go if, if, because right now this bottom of this is pitched two degrees. If you were just going, going in straight, uh, if you're just going in straight down, well then your job, you just take it down to, to the depth that you want and then you stop whenever you're ready. Mine's a different story because my tenon is, a, is consistent in its thickness but I want it to pitch in the body so that I can then determine my bridge height back here, whether it's a Floyd Rose or whether it's an ABR1 or, or maybe it's just like a, a strap or tele configuration where it's just a little brass uh, rod on the, uh, you know, mechanical adjusters, okay, the threaded adjusters. But uh, mine's a little bit more custom and uh, we want to, precision fit here we want a precision fit here and we want a precision fit here which we've got and I've already talked about the precision fit on the back but we also want it to pitch I'm pitching two degrees you pitch whatever you want but if you pitch over two degrees you're gonna have a, a fairly tall uh, string height at the bridge you pitch under two degrees your Floyd Rose is probably going to need to sit on the body and it's not going to function in a sharp fashion. You'll only be able to dive bomb with it. I'm the best of both worlds with my two degree pitch here because that allows my Floyd Rose to float and I'm able to uh, go sharp about a, about, about Three, three semitones, I believe it's called, a half tone, a half tone, a half tone. So a full tone and a half, I'm able to go sharp um, if I'm doing the Floyd Rose. Okay. All right, let me check the time. 14 minutes. 
Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to back up and punt, and I'm, I'm going to get myself back on track here. I, I got off in the world of aviation and Air Force flying and all that jazz. So let me just, uh, let me let me go over my list of the things that I wanted to cover in this, this video. We're going to talk about the neck fitment a little, little bit more, but for the most part, once you find your center, you have to go into uh, consideration mode and basically... The entire operation is going to be based on the bridge you're going with, as I just mentioned. I already covered that, your bridge height. So just know that from a mechanical standpoint, everything you do down here has got to hold the strings once they are tight and under tension at a certain height back here. You miss that by a sixteenth of an inch and you, you're, you're going to feel it. It's, it's amazing. You, I can feel the difference between a Telecaster or a, a uh, Les Paul Jr. or a uh, Gretsch uh, put Penguin or Silver Jet or a Les Paul, uh, you, you know you can just feel it. And 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 if you're if you're building a guitar that you want to look like this right here, well, it better feel like it as well. So the next thing, once you've determined which bridge you're going with, it's going to determine all this engineering down here, and then you're going to determine your tin and width. And then you're going to determine the uh, center line per what I just already covered. Then you're going to cut the, the pocket flat first. Okay. And I almost finished that conversation earlier, but I got distracted a little bit. Finish all the flat work first. This, this distance right here, go ahead and, and load your caliper up. You know, whatever this distance is. Uh, let me do this because this is this is really important. I'm not going to say it's fairly important. This is bar none critical. Okay, and at this point, you want to lock that baby and set it over to the side because as you're do as you're routing down and you've got all of this, uh, as you've got these uh, uh, templates up here, you want to reach in here and verify that the distance from let me back up. I'm getting ahead of myself. You want to make sure that you don't go anywhere near that bottoming out. If that bottoms out when it's flat, it's going to be way too low in the back because the tenon is pitched up close to three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so we don't want to we don't want to foul that up. Uh, and there's I don't know if you can see that, but that's about three sixteenths of an inch higher back there. That's the flat work. What you're going to do next. You're going to come in and you're going to build some sort of little cowboy jig like this, which is basically just a large tenon. That's just an opening. I never need, I don't need this, I don't need the bearing to ever touch this because I've already defined this opening right here. The bearing will ride in here and whether the bottom is pitched or not will now determine on this right here. So you got this as flat. Simply put this on your table saw and cut that on whatever degree pitch you want. Mine is two degrees. I've already clarified that. And then I simply screw that together. If I want to build a guitar that's two and a half degrees, well, then I pull these screws out and I make another little, little bait. See, there's my little two degree pitch written on there. And then what happens now is I come in and uh, I put some masking tape on here and I put some masking tape on right here. Keep in mind, this hasn't been routed on the, on the bottom and I temporarily jet glue that in and voila, I've got, uh, I've got this riding all the way down on the top, top corner and then I've got my pitch right there, okay? And I, it's roughly a half of an inch at, back there at the very end of the template. And now all I'm doing is I take this over to my powder table and then I put my clamps, my uh, uh, quick grip clamps right here. And then uh, I went ahead and just for safety's sake, I slid a half inch piece of uh, square plywood under here. And then that guaranteed that this thing didn't rock any if I got a little bit heavy on my router. And then I did the final quarter inch cut with uh, just two passes verifying reaching down with this and making certain that I didn't go too deep. Let's say I screwed up and went too deep. Ah, it's no big deal. What are, if, let's say you went an eighth of an inch too deep. Well, then you're going to need to cut an eighth of an inch uh, little uh, shim and glue it to the bottom of your tongue. Does it matter? Nah, it 
doesn't matter as long as you got it clamped nice and it's a good configuration and everything's clean and then you shape it and sand it because you still uh, you still have this overhang right here that will hide those sins. Okay, check the time. 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna try to make certain that I, let me get back on point. All right, just take, take, take a visual. Build one, it's just scrap lumber, but I made certain that, that that I did that with poplar because I trust machining poplar. I wouldn't have done that with maple because sometimes maple is so hard it fights you, but poplar is pretty, pretty submissive. It gives in fairly easily. And, and it defines a beautiful, consistent thickness here and here and here and here. And it also stays arrow straight. I love it. And what was that other little template? That other little template was cedar. Now, it would be too soft up here, but uh, you guys determine what type of wood you want to use. You, could only, you wouldn't want to use the cedar up here because the router running it, it's something, what, 17 to 20-something thousand RPMs? Uh, the router bit bearing itself would just burn a trench into that and then you would completely lose your, your design. So your template has to be strong enough to hold the router bit. But what I've learned to do is do all my mass route out first, never touching the template, but just visually looking down in there and seeing just how good I am at getting really close. And then I'll make, and then when I'm ready to pull the, or pull the trigger and do that final pass, then I come in out here, pull the trigger, and then I go ahead and put pressure up against up against the little template. But I don't sit there and go real slow. I go ahead and go, I go, and I'm through. One pass. Leave it alone. Stay away from it. Okay? That is if you're having to, if all you've got to see. All right. Let me get back on point here. Cut the pocket flat first, then save the last quarter inch cut roughly for the pitch bottom. Two degrees is fairly safe. I've already covered that. Uh, two degrees allows for you to either use an ABR1, in other words, like a Gibson type bridge, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, the press in uh, little feet uh, anchors, press in anchors with the adjustable uh, top uh, or just the old vintage, uh, the vintage style. See if that's in the camera. Make sure I don't pull the camera off the stand. Okay. In other words, those studs just go straight into the body. Okay. Now here, here's, here's, here's a little bit of trivia for you. If you got your notepad out, you want you. These are these are critical numbers. Just remember that two degree pitch. Okay. Did you see what I just did? Let me see if I can get that in the camera. I went to the, uh, uh, was it E, A, D, G? Yeah, I went to the D, E, A, D, G. Yeah, the, I went to the G string, which is fairly thin. Went straight down. And take a, vis take a visual. See how that little adjuster wheel is about a quarter of an inch off the, off the top? That's kind of per vintage specs. The, the ABR1 bridges are fairly low. Okay, let's lock this. Now let's measure. I'll give you some metric. Uh, 15, 17, 17 millimeter. That was to the top of the EAD, EADG. 17 millimeter to the top of the G string. That is under 11 sixteenths of an inch. That's sweet and low. But guess what it also allows? I'm trying to make sure I'm in the it allows you to put a Floyd Rose in. Am I in the right one? Oh, I'm in the. Okay, you see my engineering point here? Just imagine the top of this, the bottom, the, that surface of the caliper right there being the top of the guitar, whether it's a, an arch top or a flat top, that's kind of your target. And uh, that's, I'm looking at it here. I don't know what the metric is. It's roughly about, uh, it's, it's under a quarter. It, it's about three sixteenths of an inch. Okay. And that allows, that would allow the, uh, if this was the top of the guitar, that would allow the Floyd Rose to pitch down a little bit in the back and not dive into the body. If you get this bridge too low into the body, 
you're going to have to route out back here. And I'm going to stop talking about that, as I say, because that is a video series in its own right. All right we're at 24 minutes, 25 minutes. So uh, I, I covered it. I covered my whole note. So even if the camera cut me off, I'm in good shape. Uh, what might I what what might I want to exit with? Here's a little trivia for you. In case it cuts my audio off, uh, here's one way to start testing your fitment. Uh, slide pieces of paper up in here, then push it together. You you want to have this clamped. Put a piece of paper right there. Slide that in, and then see if you can pull the paper out. Don't freak out if it comes out. And then if, if it slipped out right here, and it slipped out right here, and then you put the paper on the bottom, and, and it was tight, well, guess what you need to trim? That ought to make sense. You want to trim that bottom. Or, or you might look up here and go, oh, man, there's still some paint left over. So you want to clean that, you want to clean that edge off. I have a little piece of scrap aluminum here that I use for, for cowboy drilling. I can lay that on a flat surface and run little drill bits through it, but I can also grab up some uh, sandpaper and just clean some paint off and then uh, start working your way to the finish line and keep putting your paper in there. And, uh, and a lot of times I'll just take the sandpaper and just uh, put it in, pull it, pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Let's say it was binding here, but it was loose here and loose on the bottom. Well, then I know that when I put this on my miter saw and I cut this one and then I flipped it and turned my miter saw, the odds are uh, my miter saw is off about a quarter of a degree. And all I got to do is find out, was well, it catching on the bottom or is it catching on the top? And then I start coming in with my files and I start uh, cleaning things up. Always, always check, always check these corners down in here. Make sure there aren't any knots because you'd be surprised that's usually where your binding starts. Uh, nothing wrong with uh, kind of uh, gulling that out a little bit, but uh, you want to start just, you know, working your way to the finish line. And how you can tell when you're there is when you, you, you put a straight edge on here and a straight edge on here and it matches that, that point up there. Or if you want to really impress yourself, do this right here. And you know for a fact, when you, when you can turn your neck 180 degrees, no, no, no trick photography there, and it fits that good, you got, you got a good build, okay? So I'm very happy with it. I'm excited. Uh, it did not sell, so I'm at a point right now. This is my guitar. I'm probably going to change gears completely. Uh, you know, for the most part, I'm not going to be a smartass, but I'm going to say f the auction. I'm going to build the guitar the way I want to build it, and then I'll list it as what I decided to, to build it as. And if it sells, that's cool. If not, I'll string it up and play it, and it'll be my it'll be my big hair band guitar okay all right so uh i probably cut my audio off by now but i appreciate you guys checking in and i hope i didn't ramble there about the neck fitment uh, it's probably cut my audio off but if it didn't cut if it hasn't cut my audio off then uh just find the center line and then uh set the depth of your router and work your way very slowly to the finish line and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks